Hi everyone, Kathy back with Big Barn Blooms. It's wreath day, even though this is sitting here, it is wreath day. We are going to create the wreath version of this today, which I'm kind of excited about. Let's get going here. It says I'm live, so hopefully this pops up on my Facebook real quick. There we go. Alrighty. Okay, when you guys come on, say hi. Tell me where you're watching from. So, does anyone ever do wreaths that match a table arrangement? Or am I the only crazy like that? Sometimes when they're in the same room, it's good to have maybe not the exact same design, but the same elements. If you have a wreath, like this is going in the kitchen, I have a pantry door that this is going to hang on. So, um, you know, they're in the same room, they complement each other versus going something completely different, which I like things to kind of, kind of blend as you walk through a room and not a lot of different things going along, going on, can't talk today, as usual. So anyway, we're going to mimic this. I'm going to set this aside. This was from yesterday's live. We're going to add the same elements into this wreath, but I have a little cheat for you today. I'm going to set this down so it's kind of out of our way so I can take up this whole table. So what we're going to do when we make this, I just kind of threw all this on the table to tease you guys before. I'm trying to decide whether to add a bow. So I'll, you know, not a bow, just a few loops, just, you know, not a full on bow, but maybe just up under the artichoke and the succulent. Maybe we have a couple loops hanging down, might look kind of nice. Um, but what I want to show you, let me pull these things apart. It's my photo off, but I didn't take it down. So maybe just a couple loops hanging out might look kind of cool. I'll set those over there until we're ready for them. Let me separate this out. But what I want to show you was you don't have to start from scratch necessarily. And I kind of teased this yesterday. Um, man, I have a messy pile here. But start with a basic green wreath. So this one was on Clarence. I believe from Joanne's. So sometimes you can start with something basic like this, you guys, and turn, don't start from scratch. I mean, I could start with a grapevine, but it's going to take more and more materials. When you can pick up something like this on clearance, which I did, you know, it saves you money and time. There's a lot of greenery in here. This would be at least several stems, if not a whole bush of this silver dollar eucalyptus. So I'm glad to be able to get that. Um, and it starts my wreath off, right? Right? If we can save some money and time, why not? So, okay. What we're going to do, it's like I've been digging in stems and whatnot, and it's almost like working in the yard. I'm all itchy, and I don't know why. Anyway, so we're going to start, like we did yesterday, with our plum. Do you guys remember this we used yesterday? Love this. And I might need more than one. I know I've got a couple scraps here from yesterday. Like I said, I always say, even there one little piece, save it. You guys will end up using it. So we're going to start with this, which looks kind of odd against this. It's like, really? But once the whole thing comes together, you'll totally understand. Uh, let's see. Do I have more of those? I'm looking in my wreath basket here. I'm going to grab one more down in case we need it. But we're getting... And we have a few on that side. We're getting low on these, but that's what they're for. I'm going to have to redo these baskets in the back of my background there pretty soon. They're getting low, so. Okay, so let's start with these. These little guys are going to go in a little bit later. I'm going to start making the basic base of the arrangement for the wreath. So let's cut this guy down. We definitely don't need all this length. And I want to be able to put the items in right where I want them. So we're going to just cut this apart. A little bit and then we can put it back together where we want it. Of course I would pick the toughest stems but I'm too lazy to go get my big cutter and move it over here so that's my fault. Can't complain right? So how is everyone today? Happy Tuesday. 
still a beautiful day here in Reading, but you know what? Everything is blooming. Everything. So I don't normally have allergies, but I feel like the allergies coming on. It's crazy. Hi, Rita. Hi, Annie. Finally got all my stuff, but just can't get myself started. Don't be scared, Annie. Dig in. Dig in. You know, the worst that happens, take it apart and you redo it, right? And um, did I send you the message? I'm hoping. I found a I was conversing with a bunch of people today that sent me DMs. Some of them I forgot to hit send, like I would type it out, but I didn't hit send. I'm like, seriously? Seriously. It's been a busy week, but that's ridiculous. I'm like, am I getting that old? But just dig in, seriously. And then I'm thinking, I have to make, you know how you're struggling with um, Annie with that wagon? Wheelbarrow wagon. No, it's a little wagon, actually. It's really cute. She got one offline, I think, Target, she said. But I'm going to make another wagon or another wheelbarrow because I want to make one in all greens. The one I made was all the Easter colors and bright. I'm going to use the same bunny, but I'm going to do it in greens and whites in case I can fit it on my front porch. Um, it'll be ready. So you'll be able to watch it again. It's going to be probably a little bit different design, um, but very, very similar. Definitely no color, you know greens and whites, except for the oranges that are on the carrots and on the bunny, so. Okay, so just, just dig in though, that's my only, um, actually we don't need picks, see I wanna go over to my sheen, I'm used to doing arrangements, right? So, we're gonna use our bluegill on this guy. Let me move that over, get her to where I can use it, all the glue drips, but I would say if it's, you got your shipment in, you've got your stuff, Dig in, just dig in and have fun with it and don't be paralyzed by it. And like with my videos, you can, if you can figure out how to put them on your TV or on a bigger monitor than your phone, maybe an iPad or something, watch them on there and then you can stop and start them all you want. It makes it a little bit easier to create a design. You just have to adapt it for your container. But, you know, the basic design will be the same. So that's my suggestion. So I'm going to figure out how far up this is coming. And I'm just going to push these in, just like we're doing a grapevine, right? I guess I could have gone overhead for this, because um, I'm doing a wreath, huh? What do you guys think? It's like I could go, or I can just hold it up every time and show you guys. I didn't think about that. We're not doing a table arrangement today. Do you guys want me to switch the camera? It'll take a few minutes, though. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Martha. Um, keep going like this, or do you guys want me to move this camera over, overhead like I did for that one read? Um, I totally forgot about that. I'm like, we're not doing that today. So, I mean, you should still be able to stay with this. It's kind of a pain to move it all, but I could do it. I would have to shift everything. Why did I do that? What is it with today? And I was supposed to go on this morning, and then things got away from us, and I'm like, I just got to do it this afternoon. And you know what, what was really hosing me up? I'll tell you honestly what was hosing me up going, going live this morning. It was the artichokes. I went to go buy. I couldn't find any more artichokes in my stash. I went to go buy artichokes, and I couldn't find the same artichokes. I was getting so bummed out. So what I did is I borrowed an artichoke from that arrangement on the other side of it, and then I'll look some more later, but at least I have it for this because I want them to match, so. Well, what I already like about this wreath base is as I add these, these are puffing up because I'm going under them and it's like pushing them up. Can you see that? So we're going to have a lot of dimension on this wreath with very little work getting it there. So these can actually, these have little wires on them. Did not know that. So I can actually fluff this. Let me fluff this a little bit before we get going. Shoot, yeah! Bonus, bonus, because you know how I like my dimension on everything I build. So these have wires, we can go all the way around. Let's just fluff this puppy up. I thought it was uh, wireless. You know how some of the, the greenery stems are just floppy? Not these, they have wire. So they put some good stems in here. They're all glued in, so I'm having to break them apart a little bit, but that's okay. So see like this, Annie. For example, like I just pulled on this and I'm yanking them, I broke a few, I don't, I don't care. Don't worry about it. Just dive in and have a good time with it. And um, don't be scared. That's my biggest advice. In fact, um, 
hopefully Angel sees this. Angel's a new follower too, and she she does this kind of a you know a business, a craft or whatever. She wants to go live, and she's worried about going live. And I remember, well, I remember kind of I was stiffer when I first started, but don't worry about it. Just do it. Just do it. And what I can suggest, because I have had Angel uh, gave me a private DM. Couple other people, any suggestions that you have to get to actually take that that uh, first step off the cliff? My suggestion is just do it. And if you're really that um, petrified, because it is kind of scary, I guess you never know how many people are going to be watching you. My suggestion is set get a tripod for your phone, you know, something to hold your phone to record, like I have, and then just hit record. Don't go live. Hit record. Make a wreath in front of there and just talk like you're talking to your girlfriends that are in the room and you're just talking about what you do. And then re, then when you're done, watch the video. And gee, what would I change? And lighting is super important, you guys. I have two massive lights in front of my table, one to the side that shines back here. So it's very bright in here. And my ceiling fan overhead has a light. There's also a ring light up here. So lots of light, so it's bright and not dark, is my only suggestion as far as equipment. You can get these lights on Amazon, super cheap. But um, my biggest suggestion for going live and taking the plunge is if you're worried about just going live cold turkey, make yourself a little video of yourself making and talk about everything you do. And in the beginning, the, the biggest problem I had, I would start building it and I would forget I had to talk about every step because not everybody's done this before. And it's like, well, I would know how to do that. No, I need to talk about every step. But what would prompt me when I finally went live is people would ask me questions. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I should cover that. So just talk about it like you have a bunch of girlfriends and it's a Friday night craft night and you're just talking about what you do. You're sharing your craft. Uh, Angel. Hi, Angel. So I was just talking about you, Angel. I told my four kids to come and talk to me. That will so help you. So help you. And record it. Record it so you can watch it and think, gee, I need to look up more or, and which is hard. So um, it's hard to look up. There's a lot going on. Um, I used to go live selling unique. Very good. Yes. Sheila, give her that, give her that little push and confidence. She needs the support. Um, hi, Frenchie. Um, and Angel's going to go live Saturday. I want to watch, Angel. I want to watch your live. Let me know what time. So that's the biggest thing is just, just do it, you know. And I've been going live almost every day. I think in two weeks I've had one day, well, maybe two days that I haven't gone live. But it makes a huge difference with how far out Facebook pushes you. Huge difference. So I'm kind of playing with that to see. I, I mean, no one can ever figure out the algorithm, right? But we know that lives help. So I figure I got to be in here making things anyway. I might as well just sit and talk and visit with you guys. So, but Angel, you will do fine. You will do fine. And do that with your kids. That's a good idea. You know, a little bit about my background and why, because a lot of you are like, it's like you've done this before. I haven't done this before, but my prior career, I taught. So you guys are going to crack up because from what I did before till now, and some of you that watch me were my old coworkers. I was a police and fire dispatcher. Yeah, like people don't call 911 because they're happy. Let's just get that out of the way. But I used to teach the new hires. So I worked for CHP and I taught both in the classroom and live on the floor and the police radios. So I had to teach in situations that were not fun. And I'm used to talking to people. That was my job. I'm a dispatcher. You have to communicate well and whatnot. So I kind of have a little bit of background in teaching as far as that. So it makes it easy for me. And this is fun to teach. I mean, that was a hard, that was a hard job to teach. But we got through it, you know. And some people, I just, some of the new hires I felt bad for because it was so difficult for them. And they would beat themselves up, you know. It's like, you know, as long as you're following all the rules and what you're supposed to be doing, you can't control the situation on the other side of the phone. But anyway, enough about that. But, so that's my background. So I did teach for a living in another career. So now I get to teach something fun. I love this. So if you haven't taught before, that would be my biggest suggestion is um, go ahead and record yourself. 
before you do a live and do one whole project and then think about what do I want to change? You know, what, what would make me want to watch this more or whatever? And what's funny is even when I taught back in the day at my old job, we would uh, record the new hires when they finally got on the floor or even when we were in training and let them listen to themselves and how they sounded. So that's my suggestion to you from doing that in my previous job, record yourself and then you'll know, oh, I see what I could do. So anyway, I'll get off that soapbox and we'll get back to work. And so um, uh, dispatch is not an easy job. Yes, and D, D worked with me, but not in dispatch. So she worked for CHP too. It was not an easy job. It, it uh, put a lot of gray hairs on this head, you know, cause I'm a people person. A lot of the dispatchers, it's funny to see like the videos on TikTok and whatnot that sh they, they play the recording of the calls and everybody hates on dispatch. They have no feeling. They, they have, they ask the same question three times. Well, you guys don't understand. We are doing 50 things when we're still trying to talk to those people. We are, we are sending out ambulance and fire. We are telling um, the units on the road. We are getting allied agencies to help. We are flagging our partner across the room. Hey, I need help with this over here. Could someone do this? So, and usually you have two microphones on, one for the telephone, one for the radio. It is insane. So give a dispatcher a break. They work really hard and, and it, unless you understood what was going on behind the scenes, those calls don't give the whole story. And they're typing like 90 words a minute because they have to get everything down. And as they say it, they have to get it entered in the computer so the times match the recording, the audio recording. So in case anything goes to court, everything has to match. Oh, so they said all that and you put it in three minutes later, you're in trouble. So there's a lot going on, so give them a break. They're doing a lot and trying to process that call. But anyway, we're here for reads. We're here for reads. I loved my job, by the way. I loved, loved, loved that job. And D, you're getting ready to retire, right? You're getting, getting close. Yes. Hi, Jamie. Um, and it was stressful, so... Yes, and it was a huge multitasking job, massive multitasking job, but so much fun and so rewarding when things worked out well. Not everything worked out well, but some very sad calls and, you know, but um, at least you could help, you know, you could do your best during that time on the phone. You were the first contact and get whatever help out there that they needed. So good job. But anyway, now I get to teach something fun and there's no stress here. This is like what I love to do. And hopefully that shows because this is just like yummy for me to do this and teach this. So, and thanks for watching. And you guys get to come visit with me. I love it. Okay, so back to this. So I fluffed it. Look at the difference in this read. Oh my gosh, look at that. It just goes poof. So I'm starting out and I'm going to get my, um, the beginning and end of the actual design I'm going to put on this. I'm not going all the way around. We're going to just do part of it. But this is going to look amazing when we're done. Right now it looks kind of funky, but just wait. So let's go ahead and put this purple piece or this, you know, plummy, plummy gray. I love the color of this. I wish I could find more of this. I'm going to have to look around. But this again was last year. And uh, they don't have it this year. Darn it. Oh, wait, that doesn't go there. Oh, hold on. Get my head back into this game and out of dispatching. And you know what's funny? It's like I have a lot of friends and, you know, old coworkers, etc. I do not like talking on the phone. Just, just let you know that right now. I don't like talking on the phone at all. And I think that was because of that job. And for a while after I retired, it was like the phone would ring and I cringe. Even though the phone never rings when you're in dispatch. It goes right into your ear. You don't even know the call's coming. It's, you hear a little beep, a tone, and there's, it's live. Someone's screaming or whatever. But I don't like being on the phone. It's like I have a cell phone, but I tell people that cell phone is for my convenience. Nobody else's. Don't try to get a hold of me because I'm probably not going to answer. You know, I'm just bad. I'm even bad on I mean, social media. I'm getting better at answering everyone, but I think there's just this aversion to phones <laughs> because of what I did. So anybody else that had a job where you had to talk all the day? all day long on the phone and handle things and you just want to kind of unplug I think so anyway but that's my story that's where I came from 
Very good job. Very, very nice. Good people too, like Dee. So, and my husband, just a little more background because I really haven't talked too much about myself on this. Um, my husband was a CHP officer and a pilot, so he flew um, helicopters for CHP. So he started out on the road, then he went to the airplane, then they sent him to paramedic school and he was actually a flight medic on the helicopter before he became a departmental pilot. So he finished out his career as a pilot. So we worked together and that's where I met Dee, who you see pop up on these lives, because she worked in that unit with him. So she was out there at the airport. So I believe, or were you in division? Um, I can't remember Dee. See, I'm getting home, but I can't remember. Where was everybody? So, but good times, really, really good times. We miss everyone. It's like now the retirements, we were all going to each other's retirement parties and whatnot. And now, you know, all of us old people are retired. Every now and then there's one or two that pop up with some of the younger ones that we knew, but um, we just don't see each other anymore. We need little reunions, I think, so. But that's what happens with work once you're, once you retire, it's like you lose track of everyone, so. Anyway. All right, a couple more of these and I'll hold it up. So I'm just working my way around one side of this. And this is very similar to the, the real romantic wreath. I did the time lapse in pink and then I did one in the burgundies and pinks. Same kind of design, just different product. But as you can see, I've kind of gone around the edge with that plum and I don't even know if that shows up real good online because, um, or on that camera, because the colors are super similar. So once I start, I guess I should take the tag off this wreath. Once I start adding everything else, it'll make a little more sense. Okay, so let me see. Let me see here. I think I want one more piece over here. So yeah, I'm gonna probably end up using this whole thing, which is fine. Do you guys ever have favorite stems where you're like, do I really wanna use that for that? Yes, yes, we will use it for that. And this is weird, so this is a, this, greenery that's already on this wreath goes in a circle in one direction. So when I do the top of it, it's going in the same direction, but when I do this side, I'm going against the grain. It's okay, just lift up those leaves and shove it in. It's okay if you go against the grain. First time I did that, I'm like, ooh, how is this gonna work? It works, it's totally fine. All right, let's see here. Let's go over here. Do one more. If I can keep this from dripping before I get it in. It's kind of weird because this is a, it's not grapevine. It's almost like angel vine. I think it is angel vine. So it's not as branchy to get things in, but it's fine. Okay. So that looks a little better. You guys can see the, where the plum goes all the way around. So let's go on to something else. So the next thing I use, I'll put that aside for later. And I saw a bunch of words coming up. Um, yes, Sheila. Um, oh, Dee, you were in a trailer. That's like when I started in Oakland. And we remember when Oakland Dispatch was in the trailer? Oh my gosh, that was such a dive. Anyway, I'm not talking about the Highway Patrol, but it was. We were in the trailer in the parking lot of the Oakland area office. But anyway, so I did. I was. I couldn't remember where. Where were you? So that's kind of good to know. But back to this. Um, the basic wreath. Yes, this is a pre-made wreath based from Joanne's. Yes, Joanne's. So look after the season. This is really important because we're in spring right now. They will be clearing seeing those coming up for summer. The spring ones. And if you see one that's all greenery, grab them. I mean, they go down to like five or eight bucks. So you get the base and you get the greenery already done for you. You just kind of add all of your different, um, you know, florals, your other color greens and your florals. It's great. Half the work's done. So save you a lot of money too. It saves you time and money. Um, okay, so. 
D. D's laughing. You laughing at that trailer in Oakland, huh? Man, that's so bad. Anyway, I could go on and on and talk about that Oakland trailer and some of the shenanigans that went on. It was fun. That was before, you know. Anyway, I won't. one day we'll have to get together, D. Fun stuff. Okay, I think we'll use this next. So these are those really pretty green branches, super tall. You can get these off of Amazon. I'll find a link and put it in. I love these. These are actually supposed to be ficus. They're beautiful. They're glossy and green, big and branchy. Normally I put these, like I brought in a couple of these today. Normally I put these in a big vase on my kitchen sink and I went, you know what, let me order some of those for a wreath because I like the leaves and it's hard to find a stem like this in the stores, right? So we're going to use them in this. Oh, good deal, Sheila. One of the orders she shipped was a eucalyptus pre-made. You added purple and lavender florals. Um, yeah, that's awesome. So I love that other people do this. Because I think people think, oh, I've got to get a grapevine, start from scratch. You do not. You absolutely do not. So, all right, we're going to cut this guy down. And especially if you have a shop, if you have an Etsy, um, you sell at all. What a great way to get some quick fillers. I mean, this would be really quick if I wasn't stopping and talking so much, but some days you just kind of stop and smell the roses, right? Stop and talk, it's fine. We will get it done. So, sorry for anybody that's rushing and may have to leave. Um, it's a talky day, so. Anyway, and this has a little wire on it, but they don't stay very well. It's not like a hard wire, it's kind of weird. But I do like the dimension in these, so we'll get these in. These wreaths are so much fun to build, just like that arrangement was. Again, it's not novelty, novelty, where I'm putting like a bunny or something in, but I just like making something different. So we're gonna get this shoved on in here. This is gonna be real wild looking, which I love. Love, love, love. And then let's get one to go toward the bottom, and then we're gonna fill in. So I start on each end, then I move to the middle. At least that's how I do it. It's like, mark the boundaries of your arrangement and then move in. And then I go from the top to the bottom. So I wanna make sure when I have, especially when you have stems that there's just a few of them. You don't wanna start and work your way around because you may get to the other side and you've shorted yourself. Does that make sense? I've done it, I've done it. Just you know, been working, listening to music, whatever, and go, what did I do? <laughs> I don't have any more of those stems. So I end up cutting them out and then rearranging them. So I find if I go this side, then this side, and keep going back and forth, I have a better chance of just distributing them equally than not running out. So, so we're pushing some of these in. Now, I'm working on a table again instead of an easel because I like pointing them up toward the ceiling, and I know I'm gonna get that dimension. I could point them out to me on the easel, but it seems like when I do it this way, they don't droop as much. They, an easel, sometimes they'll fall, you know? I don't know, it's just me. It's just how I've always done, so it's hard for me to work on an easel. I, I've been telling Bob, I think I need an easel, though, so that I could, like, set it here and work, and you guys could see it better, but. It'll be a little bit of a struggle, but I'm willing to try. So I might try to find an easel. And I did ask on another live, and now I can't figure out which live it was. I should have put it down. If it was somebody that's on today that knows someone that sells the easels, can you put it in the comments again? Because I would really like to know. Um, where is a good easel? For a good price. And it's also nice when I teach classes, workshops here and running, to have an easel for the students. So... You know, but we did that little um, heart wreath workshop, and they seem to do pretty good working on a table. So, anyway, how do you guys work? Do you guys all work on easels? What do you do? Tell me. Am I the only weirdo <laughs> that doesn't? So, okay. So we're going around, and we have quite a few. But I don't want to fill in anymore. I've got more of these branches and more little pieces. But can you see the greens now coming in? 
So now we're gonna we're gonna move into this middle. Um, I think the one more I'm gonna put. I'm looking at the arrangement on the floor. I'm like, I did use some of this. So I think I'm gonna add a little bit of this, and then we'll get our artichokes and our succulents in. This is gonna be really pretty. This was the perfect shade of greens. It has a little bit of a salmon color on the end that I think is pretty, especially when we're looking at this succulent. So it'll do really well. And I bought that wreath base a long time ago. So I'm gonna cut this guy down because we need just a little touch of this. We don't want it to overpower it, so let me get this price tag off. And I'm gonna pre-bend these a little bit in the direction. Now let's get these in here first, because I want them in the background, I don't want them front and center. So let's just put a little bit of this in. We might use two of these stems. I probably could have just got some pieces off the, the same one that's a bush. Remember I showed you guys that? So is everybody getting their orders in from Michael's? I have one coming today. I got one last week, but then I went in and went, ah, I need to reorder more of that because the chances of them running out of some of those things is pretty high. So I have another order coming in today, which I'm glad because it'll take me through the summer and into the fall. Some of it will even go into Christmas. So greenery is your friend, right? And when they have good greenery like this, stock up. So they'll have summer greenery coming in too, though, that'll be nice, but I just really like some of these pieces from um, their spray collection. We're good. And again, no, I make no commission. I, I got a lot of DMs. How much are they paying you to keep promoting it? It's like, they're not. I just, when I find something I like, I like to share it. So I'm not getting paid a dime. I should see how I can influence out for um, Michael's. But... Uh, for now, I'm just trying to get all this going again. Okay, there's a little piece. Don't forget your center. So I'm, I'm doing the outside here, but don't forget the center of your wreath. Have a few pieces just coming out to the center. It looks more natural. I burnt myself good that time. Okay, so let's see. Maybe one more little piece here. Let's see where we can put this one. I think we do need one on the outside over here. Let's have one live over here. So just a little bit, and it's not real even. Nope, it's not real even Steven at all. So this piece is kind of hanging out over here. We don't want it, I don't want it perfect, 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 okay? So it's kind of messy looking, but it'll be okay in the end. We kind of want it a little bit, you know, all over the place, in my opinion. Okay, let me put these back here for now. So next, Let's look at the artichoke, which this one already has a little stem on, and I haven't done anything with this yet. This, I'm, I'm pretty sure I can just glue it in. So I'm thinking right in here, do you notice how I kind of left this area a little bit blank? I love how this wisps up here. Let me turn it around. I know this is backwards for you, but I love how this wisps up, and then this comes around down here. So we are going to focus on this area right here for the next step. So I'm going to place these first. Remember what I say? Place twice, glue once. Because you need to figure out exactly where you want these to, to live in the wreath. <laughs> and not have to... Um, and when, I, when I'm trying to decide right now, do I want, do I want the artichoke going up and the succulent going down, but I'm thinking that the smaller pieces need to go to the top. Do you guys agree with that? What do you think? So artichoke on top, succulent on the bottom, or the other way around? What do you think? Tell me. So which one on top, succulent or artichoke? And then I'll place them and then we'll hold it up and see. Sometimes I need a little help. Um, Angel, these artichokes are so pretty. Amazon, they are very pricey. I'll put a link in when I'm done. Aren't they gorgeous? So I went to Hobby Lobby to buy them. I should have. I bought one, and then I got home, and I went, I'm not using that. This has that brilliant lime green with little red tips. It's perfect. You can't get them on Amazon, definitely. Smaller on top. 
I like your thinking, Dee. Anybody else? Angel, do you think smaller on top? Sheila? I like the look of the artichoke on top. Okay, so that's the opposite. Leanne? Oh, Leanne works on a flat board easel. That's good to know. I really need to try that. I've just done this for years. Dee does both, but prefers the table. I like that. Yes, Dee, it's going to be very full. We do need to get together. All right, let's see. Trout. Okay, Annie, you missed it. So this on top with that on the bottom or switch it from this on top that on the bottom it's like which way do we want it in the wreath kind of hard to tell right let me show you each way so first we're going to go with it on top i'm just going to place it in here not glue it because again we place once and glue we place twice and glue once do the opposite just got to find a place that's open there we go and then here is this and I think I'm gonna have a little artichoke kind of go into the middle a little bit I don't want them in a line on this on the wreath I want one coming up and one coming into the center a little bit and I'm probably gonna extend this a little bit with a with a pick because it's very heavy that's the other thing let me just let me do that because it doesn't want to stay so you can see it so let me again I'm doing it the lazy way I'm gonna carve into the end of this and make it thinner so I can get a metal pick on it because I'm lazy okay let's see let's see if that will do it may not have done it enough, but let's see if I can squish it on there. One of these days I'm going to collapse my whole table doing that. So now I should be able to get it. Let me put some glue on there. Plus it'll raise the level up a little bit too. So I'm gluing the heck out of it. Let that dry a little bit. So Frenchie, what have you been up to? Are you, um, so you said your Michaels is pretty much out of stems. Ours kind of is too. And they kind of said, oh, I glued this. I'm so sorry, you guys. Why did I do that? I can re-glue it. Let me let it dry before I put it in. Um, I needed to glue the, the pick on all the way anyway. But so Frenchie, are you making anything right now? What are you guys up to? Who's making what? I, I see a bunch of you had orders that you were um, taking to UPS and stuff, which is awesome. I'm jealous. My kitchen's full. I need to start listing them and getting back in the groove of this. Bob's like, um, we can't get to our dining room table now. I'm like, I know. I'm trying. I'm having too much fun in here to go do the business part of this. We're going to have our adult children over for dinner. I'm like, where would we sit? In the backyard. Okay, oh, still a little sticky. Hold on, hold it up to my fan. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I just don't want it to be able to grab on anything. Okay, that's enough to set it in here. So my thought is, if I can get these, and I wanna move this one, You know what, we're gonna do this. We're gonna put one stem going down and one stem going up. So it's like there, so like this into the wreath. One one way, one the other way, so that they're kind of crossing each other. And then if I do add a bow, it's gonna go kind of under, not really between, maybe a little bit between them, but you know. You wreathers know. So I can't get it to exactly stick right, but here is. There is artichoke on top. Here is succulent on top. What do you guys think? Succulent wants to fall. But basically, that's the look. What do you guys think?
working on a few things for yourself, loving therapy time. Isn't that the truth? This is total therapy for me, total. You guys have no idea, such therapy. Love the small on the bottom, okay, okay. I'm seeing that. Then I wonder, should I put two succulents because this is not a basket? What if I added a second succulent up here somewhere? Would that look better? So we had three. One artichoke and framed by two succulents. I know, I threw something else in the mix. Do you think that's even better? Artichoke on top and the bow can hunt below. Mm -hmm. Small on the bottom, big on the top. I think everybody's liking that. And I, I kind of am too. Frenchie says yes. So I'm thinking maybe, can you guys see that? Maybe a succulent on each side. You think so? I'm thinking that might look kind of cute. Let me take this uh, little tag off of here. If that's on that side, let's move this right in here. I need to get it, get it in a little bit tighter. But what do you guys think? Good luck with the two. Say yes to. Sheila likes the two. Much better with two. The three succulents. Oh my God. LOL. Much. Any too much? What do you think? So a lot of people say, oh, uh, better with two. 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 So everybody's saying two. And I, I think you guys are right. I think two is the way to go. Otherwise it looks a little strange, I think. So let's go ahead and let's incorporate these. I'm going to take these two out. Let's get this guy in first. And I'm thinking maybe he should come into the middle a little bit. Yeah. Okay. So let's throw some glue on him. And if you're doing these, like, you know, this has picks on it just to add, um, you know, some of them will have picks on them. You gotta check the underside of your wreath when you're done and make sure that none of those picks, the metal picks, come out the other side because they can hurt your customers or yourself. It happens. So if they pick, if they come all the way through, you gotta take wire cutters and cut them. Okay, so there's one. Let me go ahead and glue this guy up again. really loving that glue. Be generous with the glue. Okay, let's do one coming out the side. Like that. I'll bring that this way. You have to use a little bit of force. He's kind of hiding a little bit, but I think he'll be fine. And I'm going to just try getting this guy in without putting a pick on him. When I'm doing Louise, and this is a very flimsy base, you know, even though it's full of greens and everything, it's not like a grapevine. You know, they're kind of, the angel vine ones are, yeah, a little bit flimsy or whatever. I hate using the picks because I'm always afraid that it is going to come through, even if I cut it, and then someone's going to get hurt on it. So, okay, so what I'm going to do, this little guy's in the way. I'm going to go ahead and cut him out. I don't want that covering him. So if you end up in a pre-made and you've got things that are getting in the way of your design, just get rid of them. So let's see. Stay. Yeah, I think that looks good. I could probably come up a little further with them. I don't want them to get too, too recessed. This one's getting a little bit too recessed. Let's bring that up. Okay, I don't have to re-glue after all that. So when you pull them back, you lose your glue. Just getting this portion of this design, I think, is the hardest. It's like, let's get this right. Wish I could have got it right the first time. So I need to bring this the level of this guy up a little more. So let me just hold on to that and let it cool. And kind of move that around.
And this one's a little more recessed, but I think that's going to be okay. Blow it a little bit. I twist them back in the reed cloth hot glue on the spot and put moss. Yes, I agree, Sheila. So useful. And all these little pieces. I mean, at the end, I may want to bring some of this up front where you can see it because, of course, it's going really into the background of the wreath. So, so many little tricks like that we have. Isn't it awesome? And um, so, Angel, when you do your live, think about the little things that you do that people may not know and talk about that because it's very, very true. A lot of people don't know about all those little tips and tricks. Okay, did I have another piece of that? Because I'm thinking now I have a piece of this here, here and here, but I think we need one right here. So let me get into another stem. We'll do this piece. But don't you think with that, with this element, we need one right in here? I think. So let me, let me just throw that in there real quick. And if you work on a table, if I wasn't doing a live right now, I would probably be throwing this on the floor to see how everything's looking so far. I know, it's a weird way to do a wreath, but it's the way I do it, I don't know. Just kind of backwards. Maybe an easel will change my life. I should get one and try it. So I'm gonna bend that down. Make sure these purple ones aren't getting buried too much. Yeah, I'm liking that. Really, really liking that so far. Like that. And these are a little bit buried, but that's okay. We're, we'll uh, see what we can do get about bringing them back out. Okay, so next, let me, I'm not going to add those. I think we're going to add some of our Cosmos. Oh, it's going to be pretty, you guys. This is a great kitchen wreath. Let's see. I was even looking at like lemons might look good too, but then the, those are super bright, so they might take away from the vibe we've got going here. So it's funny, I went down that veggie aisle at um, Hobby Lobby today and I was like looking at all the different vegetables and like you can get carried away, that's for sure. And nothing was on sale today, so I was like, uh I think bridal was, but nothing in the departments I wanted. All right, so again, we're gonna place twice. We're gonna glue once. So I'm bending these apart. One's gonna live up toward the top here. This is when you're really gonna see the wreath take on life. I mean, it's gonna go whole new wreath. So now I want one down here in this area. But who would have thunk it off of a little clearance wreath from Joanne's, you know? what you can do with it. It's amazing. So I want to see I want to see pictures of you guys shopping at Joann's for these wreaths. Even Michael has them, but Michael's are expensive. They start out at fifty to fifty to a hundred dollars. I mean I don't think they're a hundred, but you know they're up there. So it takes a long time for Michael's to come down low enough. Um, as much as I have been promoting Michael's, that's my take on Michael's. So uh, Joann's seem things seem to go um, on sale a lot quicker. Oh, and Joann's I think has, is it this week? Buy one, get two free. Haven't been over there because I'm on restrictions, so I really can't buy anything else right now. I'm like, I've got to stop. This is not good. I've spent way too much money. Did I say that out loud? Bob, are you watching? Look away. Okay, get this in. I think that's gonna live in there somewhere. I also got to think about if I'm going to add that bow, we'll probably talk about that next. Where is that going to stay? Where is that going to live? And do we need it? Do to know. So bend this part a little bit. Maybe have one of these in here somewhere. So just little sprinkles of these white flowers here and there. And I do want one coming into the middle a little more like a wild wreath. 
that is really tough to get them in there, that's for sure. You know what, I think I've got to go shorter with that little guy. So something just in the middle like that. What do you think, just adding that little bit, right? What a difference. What a difference. So this is where I'm thinking, that I'm thinking take this out for now, but I'm thinking, let's look at how that bow would look. Let's check it out. And what I did, and you guys probably know, just make a double loop. And this is like a double loop, not a big deal. And then I tied it with, um, you can use anything to tie it, but I use that um, paper covered wire because then once you once you tie it down, I can glue it into the wreath or I could put a pick on it and put it into the wreath. So I just wanted a couple of loops. I didn't want it too fussy. And then I'm thinking it might be cute just to go up underneath this artichoke here. I can figure out how to get it in there. But if I can, I think it might be kind of cute. And then with some tails hanging hanging off the side. What are we thinking? Maybe? Maybe? Maybe not. I don't know. And then I did the black and white. So this was Christmas ribbon. Because it has the little gold band. But I kind of liked it. I went, you guys, this was Sam's Club this year. Did anyone get any of this? I used a lot of it at Christmas. It looks great with red. Um, but I thought, you know, for spring, it might be kind of cute. Let's see what it does. And I thought if we just kind of nestle this right in with this one. So we're not doing a full bowl. We're just doing a few loops and a few tails just to add the accent. I thought it might have been cute. What do you guys think? Do you like it with a little bow? It's hard for me to see. And then, you know, the succulents, they're, they're kind of recessed. I may need to bring them out a little bit. But do you think we keep the bow? And I would fix it a little bit better than that. But do we keep it or do we lose it? What do you guys think? Love it, love it, love it. D loves adding the bow, yes, okay. Martha likes the bow. All right, well, maybe we add a little bow then. Do you think that's the right color? Do you like both of the colors in there? The black and white stripe with the burlap, wired burlap? Keep the bow. So everybody says, yeah, keep the bow. All right, let's keep the bow. So let me see how I'm gonna put that in there. Let's start with the burlap. And I think I'm gonna put a pick so I can get in a little bit further. And I'm not going um, through the roof, so I threw the wreath. <laughs> so if this is the wreath, I'm not going straight into the wreath. I'm gonna be going through the middle of the wreath. So if I get a little more length on this, a little more area for the glue to grab on, I think it's a good thing. So I don't want this going through to the other side. Let me get this all glued up. Hopefully not drip it on everything. And I pull that stem out for now. But I definitely want it up pretty tight. Come on. Where's my needle nose? I might need help guiding this in here. I think I hit a roadblock. What are you hitting? Don't do this to me hitting something. I need more strength. But that's good. It's good that it's being difficult getting it in there. That means it's really getting in there. So, And I do like that we can bring these tails down to the side. And this makes these stand straight up. So there's our first bow. There's our first little loop, so we've got these hanging down here. And then let's get this guy in. 
I'm going to do the same thing. You need that little added length of the metal pick. And the pick is thin, so it'll go through anything. Where that, that wire, the, the covered wire is a little bit thicker. Another glue stick. Alrighty. Let's get this guy in now. Don't drip on my burl hat. God, I'm so afraid it's gonna drip. You guys do this? You dance with your ribbon to keep it from dripping? <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Quickly, get it in. Get it in there. Ah, oh, got it in there. Whoop, whoop. Okay, so now I'm gonna bring this tail around the burlap. I love that the, the um, Sam's Club ribbon is very flimsy. It's not a real thick, sturdy ribbon, so I can manipulate it a little bit better. Where the, of course, we know the burlap is just tougher than snot, you know. There, it's thick and it's tough, and so it's kind of nice to have the two together. So we're going to do that. We just want a little touch. Let me... Go ahead, and, and we could put more tails in too. More tails might be cute at the bottom, so. Um, nope, wrong way. Let's get these going. And this one. So has anybody else ever put vegetables in a wreath. It's kind of a funny thing, but you know. Do I want that? No, maybe I'm going to bring that back over this way. I kind of want it with the um, the burlap, I think. I don't know. I'm going to do this. Let's go under like that. Do you talk to your ribbon like I do? So, I'm going to need this guy to come over this way more. Probably should have just done them instead of on top, maybe maybe up underneath each other. But we'll see how this looks when we're done. I may, I may move and rearrange that ribbon. But at least we have both colors in right now. And I like the colors. I really do. I think they look really good. So, and I like them kind of hanging out up underneath that. So let me, I'm going to set this here. Let me clean up my mess a little bit and then let's add those white flowers. Things are getting out of control over here with my mess. Anybody else clean as they go? I'm like, it starts getting messy and it gets harder to work. So every now and then, sweep up your mess. But this is angle vine, the base of this wreath. You know the green stuff I used on that watering can? This is it in the brown. So this is what those wreath bases are made out of. So and the one I the bright green. The bright green I had was dyed, so kind of pretty. So now I'm wondering, maybe I should have put a succulent over here, but I don't think I have any more of those. But it might have been cute to put one there and one there. We'll see when we get it all done, so. All right, let's get these guys in now. So I took this out so I could get those ribbons in. But this is gonna go in the middle here. And this one. Needs to go over here. Come up underneath that ribbon. So you're gonna go in there, but I'm gonna come back over here with it. Like that, because then we've got the bow tails, so. And then when you put your, just like in other arrangements I've been teaching you, um, when you get your blooms in, I, I kind of bend the flower up so it's facing you when it's on the wall or on a door. Just is a nice look. So let me go ahead and glue all those in. And then we'll move on to the next element because we've got a couple more things to put in this. I love this yummy wreath. It's going to look really cute. All from a little clearance base. you got to love clearance, right? 
save your money while you're cutting. I'd rather save money on something like that base and then put a little bit more expensive stems in. Like these glossy green ones, they were, they were pricey. The artichokes, very pricey. Um, but I save money on the base, so I can do that. So think about where you can save your money. And you won't be able to tell when you're done, you don't know what kind of base is on here. I mean, you see that, the greenery, but you can't tell. Wasn't always on clearance, so. Fluff some of this up. I need to take that one off because it wants to go right into that succulent. So I think these succulents could have been brought up a little more and I may need to do that because they're really getting lost in the arrangement. So it's a learning process. Okay, let's get these glued in. to know what to grab onto to stabilize it while I put something in it. Okay, so there's that. I'm liking it. What do you guys think? Did I get this guy in? No. So let's glue this little one in. He's cute. And then we still have two more elements to put in to mimic that basket. And I always like bringing at least a couple of blooms or something, like I have the uh, different greens. Have them come into the middle. Don't neglect the middle of your wreath, because it just adds interest. You want this to look like it's growing everywhere and not just straight. Now the one I did back here was a little more structured, but I did bring it into the middle. But especially on a wild wreath like this, look at how, what a difference that makes to have that little bloom hanging out in the middle there. It just really adds some interest to it. Okay, so next, now that those are done, I'm going to add some of these. Because we do, we want all the elements that are in that basket. So I'll put that up there. Let me cut some of these down. Yes, I'm going to get rid of those little ugly grasses. Yeah, I'm picking on these little grass things, but I just don't like them. I don't know why. They're just not doing it for me. But I may pick these together in groups of three. I mean, they probably wouldn't have looked bad in here, right? But I'm going to take them out. Oh, be an honorary. Here's three. You almost bought the little carnation. They're called carnations. I love these. Um, I had tons of Christmas ones I bought last year for a wreath. Never made it, so now I can do it. Yeah. Um, I wanted so bad to go look at the Sam's Club ribbon for spring. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Because I'm doing a lot of designs without ribbon this year, if you haven't noticed. Um, I even took this bow and put it in the basket where I took that artichoke out. And I liked it. I'm like, oh, I could put a little bow in there too. But... Um, I have a hate-love relationship with ribbon. I mean, I like doing little touches like this in there, but um, I don't know. I could live without it, honestly. Honestly. But that's my style. I do kind of like the garden style. So, yeah. I mean, I think, too, and I'd rather split, put the money in the different elements rather than in ribbon. And then my other take on ribbon, if you haven't watched me a lot, is ribbon... Do you guys notice that ribbon is also fatty? It's not fatty, but fat. It, it can be popular one year, and then like burlap is going out now, or the different styles of ribbon change. 
So I like to make more timeless designs. And by not using ribbon, they're a little more timeless. That's my take on it. But not that I hate ribbon or anything, but it's just, this is my vibe without ribbon. So even though I have ribbon in this, but um, I love looking at ribbon. Oh my gosh, we did some ribbon classes at Christmas time and it was so much fun. We had, we had so many bows going on here in the house, it was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. All right, let me cut some more of these down. We'll see how that looks. So I'm just putting three together and staggering. I may put maybe one or two coming out the side here too, we'll see. But I want this element in. It also picks up the, the lime green that's in the artichoke, so I like that. Some of these are just giving me heck. They're like, no, we're going in the arrangement. You're not throwing us away. I'm like, yes, I'm throwing you away. Okay, I'm delirious. I'm talking to my stems now, you guys. I'm talking to my stems. What the heck? I need help. I need help. Um, Sheila, you've been getting into designer ribbons. They're so gorgeous, but they're so pricey. But yet, oh, the big four inch and six inch Oh, widths, I love them. I do, I absolutely love them. But I'm like, how much would that run my arrangement up? I'm always looking at the cost, so I don't know. I think next year, or later this year, I'm gonna go to market for spring next year and, and see, see what I can come up with. And like I said, I'd love to bring kits back. I've had a lot of DMs for kits. When are your kits gonna start again? I didn't even do that many. I just got going on kits and then you know, COVID hit and I got sick and it's kind of a bummer. So it'd be nice to bring them back. But with kits, I really can't rely on Michaels and Hobby Lobby because you, you can't always get the quantity you need to do kits. So I need to head on over to market this year. But I love doing the kits. It's so much fun. Shoot a video, give them a QR code to link to it. It's just a lot of fun. Okay, so I did those two. Let me see how they're looking. I need to move this over a little bit, I think. And then let's put maybe one here and one there. Let's see how that does. Don't glue it yet. Place twice, glue once. Breaking my own rules again. But I think we need a little something down here and down here. I don't know. Maybe that's too much of the grain peeking out, but we'll see. What do you guys think? Too much of that lime green, those little carnations, or not? Yes or no? Do I just keep these two, or do I add these over here? What do you guys think? It's hard for me to see on. Let me hold it and let me look on my um, monitor here. Linda, I'm getting ready. I'm actually researching. I might just wake up my website. So I have a full website on Shopify, and but I had a lot of customers say, aren't you on Etsy? I feel more comfortable with Etsy. But I'm on Shopify and you can use PayPal and whatever to, to purchase. So I spent a lot of time on that website. I hate to just trash it, you know. So we'll see, I'm actually working on it. So probably in the next week I'll be selling. Everything you see that's shippable, you know, some of the bigger ones are like the wheelbarrows and stuff. Those would be too hard, but items like this would definitely be shipped. So, so what do we say with the green? Um, oh, thank you, Linda. That's that's very encouraging because I'm I'm nervous about it. Okay, I usually have just sold locally, and then I got into selling online right before COVID, and then everything you know what happened. So. Um, do I put all that green in? What do you guys think? All the green? Or is it too much? Tell me what to do. I like that little things are peeking out here and there, you know? I'm trying to look at it on the monitor, but I like that you're seeing things at different levels. Martha likes the green. So Angel, you sell on both. That's good to know. Because I can link them on, you know, like this Facebook page and all my other social media. So, interesting. 
And you know, did anybody that's on take Jennifer Allwood's course? I did. Um, if you guys are sellers and you haven't looked into Jennifer Allwood, follow her. Even just listening to her on a daily basis, she makes a lot of sense. I took her course and she talks about that more than one, well, different revenue streams, but also don't put all your eggs in one basket as far as like Etsy, because Etsy, there's been sellers that have like, they shut my shop down and it's like, oh my gosh, that would be terrible. And you've got to make sure, that's the other thing I need to do is get emails going from everyone so I can make announcements, etc. So that if anything ever did happen, I can say, go over here, this is where I am now. So there's all these different facets of selling. And that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out right now. I mean, I had it all figured out before, but it's like, what direction do I go now? Love the green. Annie, your friend sells on Etsy. And Etsy, it just seems so flooded. But I mean, yes, I, if someone just didn't know me and went on Etsy, they would probably never find me. But I love that I have this platform where I can say, make something like this and say, it'll be in the store in an hour. Go in and enter it. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking. I'm seriously thinking about it. So, all right. So I'm going to add all the green because I think the green looks good. Adds a little dimension to it. Let's just go ahead and put pop that puppy in. And it's amazing. I'm glancing over here on the floor at the basket, and it it, has, it looks just like the basket, just in wreath form, which is what I wanted to do. So, kind of nice. Okay, let these come out there. This is a little long. And I love that you can pick these together like this and have three going at once. It makes it so easy. One of the designs I'm thinking of putting in whatever store I open this next week is the, did you guys see the little bunny double? He does not show good on a picture, even the video. He's about this big. He's not huge, but I'm going to get it before we end today and show you guys. Those are going to go online. Um, I mean, I have the, the little workshops coming up, but I have quite a few of them. So, um, I'm trying to think. I, with the guys laying down, I think, I don't know, over a dozen. So I may put a few of those on there too. I have people asking about, are you going to sell them? It's like, we're, we're seeing how much the workshop is filling up. And I have a group trying to buy the workshop out right now privately. So we'll see how that goes. They, they don't have much longer to commit because the workshop is scheduled for Sunday. So we'll see how that goes. All right, so this is going to go up here. Don't drip. There, there's that green. What do you think of that green? Let me look at it on my little monitor here. And hopefully I'm holding it at the right angle, you know. So, yeah, Angel, you should post your website. Definitely do it. Thank you, Annie. Yeah, I always encourage, if you guys are following me, I mean, I've, I'm over 10,000 followers now, go ahead and put your put your links or whatever. I'm fine with that. We should all help each other out, you know? The internet is a big place, so if we can help each other out, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay, let me weave some of these down below. And we're gonna add I'm slowing down a little bit. You know what I found? It's like my long COVID is still here. I'm so frustrated with it. But everything is blooming, and I've never had um, allergies or asthma before. But it, the asthma was brought out huge by the long COVID, and um, luckily I, the oxygen's gone. But the fatigue is like, oh my gosh, what the heck? You know, and I'm usually an energizer bunny, so I'm like, I don't know what the heck's going on. 
but we'll see. I think it's the everything blooming here in Shasta County. So, okay, so the last thing we have to put in, get rid of that. We're getting there, you guys. Let me take a little swig of water here. We have some of these. Remember little groups of these guys? And I think this would just add a nice touch to this. So let's cut some of these off and let's incorporate a few. I think it'll be pretty. And I can actually pick some together to incorporate. I'm gonna save my little leaves for future project. But I have a bunch of these bushes that I cut into. So let's use the partial bush up. Here, pull those down. Little touches like this just make a difference. These were Hobby Lobby. I loved them. Did anyone ever use these little baby ranunculus from Hobby Lobby? And they don't have them anymore. I'm so bummed. So I'm going to try to source them. We'll see what I can find. Okay, let's get a couple little bunches together here. And we're going to pick them. Oh, and we still have a little fern to add. Yeah, we're going to add the fern. I feel like I'm being really slow today. I don't know what you guys think. I'm sorry if I'm taking so much time. I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. So I want some on the outside. But yeah, I just feel like I'm slow for some reason. So I'm sorry if I'm slow today. Not glue, a pick. So I'm just placing these and then we'll, we'll get them glued in once we've figured out where they're going to live. So I think a little piece poking out there. I like that they kind of, you push them in and hide them a little bit with the greenery. That's a good look. We don't want them out in your face like these. We want them a little bit recessed. So let's see, let me turn this around. It's, it's getting hard to see this up on this table. So I'm gonna work from this. I don't like this succulent here. So hold on a second. I may have glued him in too tight. I think he needs to come up a little bit, honestly. Can I get him out or did I really do a number on him? Anybody do this like me? I'm like, I don't like where that is living. I don't think I can. I think he's in there. I could cut him out, but then I'd have to try to fasten a stem for him, but that's okay. Leave him for now, Caddy. Just leave him. Let him be. But he's so recessed, but maybe it'll be okay. Okay, a couple pieces of this, and we'll see how we're looking. It's way too long. Cut some more. pieces of that in the basket. So we're not going to go too crazy with this. But we do need to mimic a little bit. So I think a little piece living here by the bow would be cute. Kind of makes that bow not just so in your face, you know, put something by it. And then of course at the very end, I'm getting ahead of myself, but I want to bring some of this out the bow, that little green. Oh, it's going to be so cute. Get ahead of myself. Back to these. Back to these guys. Stay focused. You can do this, Kathy. Anybody want to jump to the good part? <laughs> when you're building something, it's like, I want to put that in now. It's like, no, let's stay focused. Let's do it in order. Okay, let's try these. I don't think we need much more than that. So 
there's three more. And this might be enough. Let's see. Okay, let's spin this one a little bit. See, I'd like a little piece down by that succulent, but I don't want to cover him up either. That's what I'm afraid of. Maybe, maybe hiding right there will be okay. Just a little bit. So he's so recessed. See what I'm saying about this guy right here? He's really in there. And I, I think I'm gonna, once I'm off camera, I'll try to figure a way of getting him out and repositioning him because I think he's just a little too low. And I want one over on this side too of this bow. I like how that looks with it coming out underneath the bow here. And then we need one up here. One of these guys right in there. So let's see if that's enough. I need one more right here. Why? I don't know why. We just do. We have one living on the side over here, so I need one living on the side over here, just so we got that balance. Otherwise, it's going to look like we have a hole. Even though there's no hole there, it'll look like we have a hole. So, okay, here we go. So this guy's going to come in this area here. Like that. And let's look at this. And I know I keep crushing the bow and whatnot, but let's just look at the white. What do you think about adding those little whites? I'm trying to look on there. All right. I like that. Angel, good job posting that. So I think I'm liking that. Now this would be gorgeous if we went all the way around. I don't know, maybe we need to go all the way around. Would have been coolest to put like three groups of these, but that this wreath would be like, whew. I think the artichokes are like $8 each or something. They're expensive, so. Um, but I think we'll be fine like this with it on one side. I think we'll be okay. So let's see what else we have to put in. I think that's enough of the white. Maybe we'll do one piece of white right here. Let's try that. Sometimes you just need a little bit glued right in the bow. And like I said, I want to add um, some of that green too. So let's put that over there. Let's, let's break down some of these greens. And what, I need some fern too. Definitely need some fern. But look if we end up taking, once I get this bow figured out, and we just incorporate a couple little pieces of that green. Look at how that makes that bow look right? So don't forget about bringing things out from your, your uh, bow. I think it looks really good. Okay, so now those are all set. Let me glue all those in really quick. That shouldn't take too long. And then fern! We're to the fern! Love the fern. Because that's just going to make it go wow. You know me and my fern. Okay, there's one there. Does anybody else do the method of you place them twice? And I say place twice because I place them once when I'm trying to figure out where they go and I place them again when I glue them in. So place them twice, glue them once so you don't have to. And I should have done more with that succulent. That's an example. Um, yes, I paid, I'm going to place it twice, but I glued it. Remember the glue was on it? I'm like, mm. kind of broke my own rule there. Okay, that guy came out. I'm going to push him in. Get him more recessed in there. Okay. But it really does help if you do that. Less, you know, flower surgery when you're done trying to cut things out and reposition them. So I like doing it that way. Okay, so where was this now? This was open here. Yeah. But yeah, that little succulent's really hidden now. I'm not liking that. Glue this in. Nope. Then you play that. Did I glue that in? Okay. Trying to get into those vines so that it sticks. There we go. Yeah. 
If you don't have a stemming machine and you want to combine little blooms like this, just use the wood picks they sell in the craft stores. They work, they work fine, you guys. They honestly do. Um, and if not that, just get some floral tape and wrap them together. They'll be fine. Okay, so I need this one over here. It's coming together. I like the little pieces of this, this um, off-white, this white that has a little green and yellow in it. I love how it bounces off all the greens. The, the um, Cosmos are super pretty. But these look more fresh, I think. Well, the Cosmos look fresh too. But this just adds a little bit, a little bit of pizzazz, I think. And I'm gonna recess that a little bit, I think, yeah. Right like that. Okay. And you know, this might even be a pretty one if we bring these straight down to have it be on the bottom like that. So you could go side, bottom. There's all different ways that you could hang this. Okay, so now, for, don't you think we need just a few touches of this in there? What do you guys think? Um, I was double checking a week last night before I packed it up and forgot to pull a couple items out and glue. I have done that, Sheila, it's so bad. I was taking, I had a booth in a, in a co-op place and I was taking a load in and things were falling off the I would wreath. I'm like, seriously, like a whole element that I placed and didn't glue. And I like had to throw it back in the car, take it home and finish it. So I hate it when that happens. Thank you, Annie. I'm glad you like it. It's like I try. I try. That's you know, my little addiction here. Okay, I'm gonna pull this apart. We're gonna add a few pieces of fern just to bring it to that next level. Again, no fern is being injured in the making of this wreath. I say that disclaimer every time because I'm just silly. Okay. Let's cut these apart. Like that. I got glue everywhere. I'm going to have to clean this mat. And then we're going to break these down because we don't need big pieces. We just need little pieces here and there. So I'm going to start up here. And I am going to put a pick on this just so I can really get it into those vines. And let's just place first again. Let's bring one up here on this end. I just think this is really going to make it go aw. See what a difference when you add just the one piece of fern? Just going to finish this off nicely. And let's try another piece. And we'll just scatter them here and around, just like the basket. So maybe one right in here. that. Let's bring these two together. One of my favorite parts is, is the fern. It really just adds so much to the design. Seriously. Seriously good. And I think we'll probably use this whole bunch. So we can't neglect the middle, so let's let's have some coming in the middle. Even if it goes slightly over the white flowers, I think that's okay. So let's bring some over the middle a little bit. I'm gonna work from this side. Go underneath that artichoke. And just have it kind of flow in there a little bit. And again, I'm breaking my own rule. I should have bounced to this side, so I'm gonna bounce there now so I don't run out of fur. Because <laughs> we're getting to the end, so I need to make sure I get equal amount over on this side. But honestly, if I had to get into another, for a wreath like this, if I had to get into another, you know, pick of fern, I would. Because this fern is just like, it's yummy. It's yummy. Okay, so that's there. And this, you know, this started out as a small wreath. It's getting pretty big. 
pretty big. Piece in there. I might have to get a couple pieces off another kit. But I think I've got some scraps from another design that I can use. Uh, we need a piece over here. Let's get into the scraps. Here's some scraps I took out of something else I was building. They already have picks on them, which is good. So I'm going to put one right here by this bow. Lift up my bow a little bit. Here. I'm going to have to manipulate these tails a little bit. Sometimes I like to just put in the bow loops and then do the tails separate so they don't get hung up on things and I don't have to try to weave them. You know, just uh, cut a piece of ribbon, fold it in half or one side shorter than the other, wrap it with that uh, wire that's covered in paper, and then stick it in. And we may do that. If these are get too bizarre and too hard to deal with, I may just take cut those off and, and reinsert some uh, let's see oh i see i didn't glue that in yet so it's kind of getting in the way let me go up over here this wreath is getting pretty crowded i mean i'm not even gluing it yet but i still want it to go in where it should and then let's put one up in here just a little piece one more piece. Do we need one in the middle? I think we might. Yes, we do. Let's put one in the middle here. Sometimes just a single piece is all you need, not a group. Of, not a group, just a piece. I want that to come out more in the middle. Like that. So see what a difference? Look at that little bit of fern. Just brightens the whole thing up, right? I love it. Okay. So I'm going to glue all that in. Let's, um, let me see. And then I have these little pieces and the pieces in the bow. So let's go around and do the fern first. One piece at a time. So these are time consuming, huh? These handmade reeds like this. And this is why, you know, we may save, we may honestly save a lot of money on the base and things like that. But you guys, these are labor. These are wreaths of labor, I'm telling you. Um, so make sure if you're making these kind of designs that you're charging accordingly, accordingly because they are, they are, you know, what are we at? It's 4.30, we're at an hour and a half right now on this. I have talked a lot, I, I understand that. And that is true, you know, I could probably crank this out maybe in an hour if I wasn't visiting, but you know. They are not, they are not quick designs when you're doing a garden type reef like this with all these different elements. So pretty when you're done though. And I love that these are going to, um, this is going to mirror that basket. So pretty. Next. Super easy to glue them in once you've placed them. But I think it's super, super important to do that so you don't run out of material. You know, get part way around a wreath or you don't like where it was placed. Just makes sense. Okay, let's put this guy in. Of course, that's the one that gave me heck. So hopefully he goes back in easier. Like when you slide it in, it leaves a trail of, of glue, and I just put my hand right in it. Don't do that. Okay, we're looking pretty good. Let's get this guy. Just 
just work our way in a circle. Then keeps falling over. Okay. I do like using the picks on the metal picks on these little guys though, because you really can get into that um, wreath. The, I mean the fern. You guys, a lot of you have ordered this fern. Um, the stems aren't too flimsy, but for something like this, they're a little bit, a little bit, when you're trying to push them into a wreath base, so. Okay, and now the middle. Just a couple little pieces in the middle. And then I'll check out the basket and see if we, I think we've got all the elements in it now. I don't like that that um, succulent is so recessed. That's going to drive me nuts. I may have to get in there and reposition it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but it's going to make me crazy. I know it. Especially when I go to take my picture and my video, I'm going to go, oh, it got lost. What the heck? table. I want to glue a couple of these little guys in because I think it does make a difference. So where's my other piece? It probably fell off the table, but let's get a glue stick. So two, almost two glue sticks to do this project. But let's glue one of these in. In fact, before we do that, let's see what we're going to do with these loops. They're kind of like all over the place. One is recessed more than the other. I don't know if I'm liking that. Do we like it like that? No, we don't like it like that. I'm going to pull this black and white one off and see if I can get it back out. I think it needs to go under it and not on top of it. So hold on a second. There's my cutters. I'm going to cut them out. You can always grab another um, piece of ribbon because it's pushing too much on these loops and making them weird, honestly. And this guy glued up into that. Huh, I got a twofer. So let me reposition this with a thing and we're going to fix it. So sometimes when you get to the end of the design and you've added all these things, and I probably should have added the ribbon a little bit later, um, it pushes on everything and it looks funky. So I need to bring this more down into the design. There we go. And then work on this bow. So I think what we'll do, I'm to figure out where this is gonna live. guy because I think I do like the two colors do you guys agree the two colors together are kind of nice um, but it's a matter of where is it going to go I'm wondering if it should go under it instead of in it like that so it's like that kind of done -ish. like that I think I like that better so let me get this guy glued back in now he has a short little thing, but I'm just going to get him into the other ribbon, and he'll be fine. With my needle nose. 
and I think it'll look better than them crossing on the top look kind of funky. So we'll get this looking more normal. Don't come back out. Some of the balloons and stuff have squished it a bit, so okay. So we'll do that, and then I want to put a little piece of this white balloon right here after I put on this guy. Let's put a little piece of greenery. Right in there, and then let's get this guy on. Much better. Okay, now I had another piece. Let me walk around here and see where it fell, because I, I heard something crash. There it is, on the floor. So that little piece fell. I'm, I'm like, where is my other little piece of greenery? Precious greenery. So we're going to do one more piece toward the bottom of the bow. And that will finish that off. Yes, I like it much better. All right, guys. I think we did it. Finally. Let me let that glue for a second, and I'll check your comments. I want to move it till these two guys get really, really cooled off a little bit. So, don't like that succulent so recessed. Darn it. Darn it. Last my, that's my last succulent, too. I don't have any more of those. And those were Hobby Lobby, but I bought a bunch of them last year, and now they've changed them. They're not the same. Um, Annie, you're, you're so welcome. Um, you're going to buy a wreath base? I have a $20 one, so I need to go see what other little things. But also, if you have small ones like that, Styrofoam's a good thing to use for them. I'll do that a lot. I'll either buy that, or I'll buy some of this papered wire, little supplies that run your cost up are so nice to buy with those vouchers. So I'm liking this. I'm gonna mess with the ribbon once I get it hung up to take the picture. But what do you guys think? There she is. Kinda of cool, off of a cheap Joanne's base. You can do so much with that. And then there's different ways you can hang it, you know? You could, any, any really, any direction would probably be fine. So, there we go. And then, just to show you how they complement each other, um, let me bring the basket back up. Because that's what I was really going for, is something to complement that in the same room. Let's see if I can get this. Oh, Jack's giving me heck today. So here's this guy. Here's our little basket, and then here is the wreath. So they totally complement each other. So if I had this like on my pantry door, that on my island, or somewhere in my kitchen, they'd look great together. So sometimes when you're building your florals, think about companion pieces for the same room. And it's also a way to build your sails, because if people see them like displayed like that, together. They're like, I need to have them both. So it's a great way to up your sales a little bit too. But fun, fun wreath to do. I like that. I love having that base already made for you and you just add to the top of it. So, but of course, those little succulents are disappearing, darn it. But they'll probably be okay. I'll probably destroy their arrangement if I try to cut it out, right? So, and, I, and this is backwards, of course. So let me turn it this way. Because everything is backwards on this, but now these aren't hanging the right way, but that's okay. So these will droop down more. But that's more of the side I built it on now that you're seeing it from that angle. It's just that the, uh, the bow is a little strange now because I have it literally upside down. So anyway, there you guys go. 
bring this front and center a little more so you can see it. And then I check the back for my picks. And I see a few sticking out here, so I'll have to go and cut those so I don't impale someone. But there you go. So now I did borrow that artichoke. Look at now I got a big hole back here from here. So I don't know, I might stick a couple pieces of um, ribbon in there. Maybe that'll take it up. But I got to order some more artichokes though. So I'll get you the link for the artichokes and for this this really waxy greenery that, I mean, you see a lot of the influencers are using that greenery just in bases, but I love cutting it down in the leaves. I think it's gorgeous and an arrangement. So anyway, let's see if there's any more questions. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Dee. Uh, you like the space left. So you like that where it's like one-sided and there's this, this side that has nothing, you know? And honestly, this would be beautiful with it all the way around, but Sometimes it's nice just to have one side and just the natural, and it saves money too, because it would be, you know, basically double, because you have to mirror this on the other side. So you keep your cost down a little bit too, which is good. Um, thank you, Sheila. So anyway, that's it for today. Um, I have to make, I'm working on everything for my porch. I have to do one more wheelbarrow. So, um, I'm thinking alive tomorrow rather than doing something brand new. I'm going to do another wheelbarrow, but in, in all the greens. None of the pinks and the yellows and all that. We're going to do it all neutral. So if you guys want to hang out with me tomorrow while I build, because I've got to get all my stuff done for the porch. I also have to build more of those garlands too. But um, So I think that's what we'll do tomorrow. So if you want to see it again, but different. It's not going to be exactly the same. It'll be a little bit different, a little bit more elegant arrangement. Even though that is a country little wheelbarrow, we can make it look a little more elegant. So I'm going to come on and do that. Um, I don't know what time yet. I don't know if it's going to be morning or afternoon. Um, probably morning because I have my girls in the afternoon. So we'll see about later in the morning, like 11 or something. So let's see. Um, okay, so Dee would like to see natural one. Um, good, good. I like that because I'm like Angel's game and he'll be there. Yeah, so I'm glad you guys are game for that because I do have new designs, more new designs to bring you, but I gotta get caught up and I gotta clear the floor back here because all that is sitting out here to get done. So, and then get my porch together so I can do the live and show you the porch. So, tomorrow, let's think 11 o'clock tomorrow morning and I'll put another thing on, but I think 11 will work. It'll give me enough time to get off out of here before I go get my granddaughters. So anyway, have a great night. Thanks for following me and watching this again today. And um, I know I said we're going to come up with something and I, I have an idea to give away and that's coming. So I'm going to catch my breath and, and get caught up in here and we're going to probably post that this weekend. So thanks guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your comments. Remember, like, share, give me some hearts, all that and um, make sure you're following my page. Also, for the giveaway, you have to be following my page, not just liking it, to win. So, it's coming. It's going to be a good one. Thanks, guys. And what is, what is today? Tuesday. So, happy Tuesday. Have a great evening. Sorry I took so long. We're almost to two hours for this guy. These are time-consuming reads, even though you start with a pre-made base. But are they so worth it? It's worth it. Try it. You guys will like it. Tell me what vegetables you come up with to put in there. So, all right, guys, we will we'll see you tomorrow morning. Bye now. You're welcome. <laughs>